Hi, welcome to another video. So this one's going to be a brief introduction to field effect transistors. Show you what the linear region or ohmic region is on effect uh, compared to the active region. It's uh, different for transistors. So this is FETs, field effect transistors. So I had a PV amplifier the other week. One of these FETs had failed. So I just thought I found another one. This was capable of handling something like 88 amps, 200 volts. I thought that would do, put it in, and it's getting red hot in seconds. And the fan was running, so I had to keep on turning it off before it blew up. This is the genuine PV one, but they engraved the numbers off it. This is one I purchased that gets red hot in seconds. And then I've subsequently ordered this one. And I've yet to put this on the amplifier. But while I'm doing a test, I saw the ohmic region, the uh, which is also known as the linear region. As you increase the voltage on the drain to source, the current rises in a nearly linear fashion. So that's why they call it a linear region or ohmic region. So if I show you what I've got, so I'll show you this power supply. I've got a 12 volt bulb wired up to a power supply. I'm con controlling the drain and source voltage and then the gate is from the secondary power supply. This is the gate. I've got uh, 13 volts approximately here on the drain through the bulb and then grounding the source here. So this is just a regular N channel MOSFET. Right, so on the left hand side, this is what I'm using to control the bulb current and voltage. That's one power supply and then separate power supply over here, but I've got the earths linked. So at the moment on the gate of that FET, I've got 4.3 volts. And you can see the current flowing from the drain and source through that bulb is 20 milliamps. So this ohmic region or linear, uh, the linear region suggests if I double that voltage, the current will double as with Ohm's law. So that's why they're saying it works in a linear fashion. So 4.3 volts on the gate is not turning on properly. So we're just in the linear region of the FET. So proof is in the pudding. I'll double this voltage to the drain and the current should double. And it does. So we started off with 20 milliamps and now we've got 40 milliamps at 20 volts still with 4.3 on the gate. So I personally don't know of where you would use this sort of function using the linear or ohmic region of the FET, but that's what the ohmic linear region is on a FET. And I've done a quick drawing here. So this FET is rated at, I don't know, something like 4.6, 4.7 volts to turn on. So somewhere at 4.6, 4.7 volts, it will turn on and conduct my you know sort of up to 80 amps but it's not fully turned on yet so we're in this region here where it's not turning on but the voltage or the current flowing from the drain to the source uh, is linear with voltage we are roughly at 4.3 volts gate to source so we're somewhere here before the FET turns on and that's the ohmic region there ohmic region or linear region as I say, because the current is nearly linear to the drain source voltage. So as with Ohm's law, double the voltage, you'll double the current. Half the voltage, you'll half the current, you know, so on and so forth. And just to reiterate, this FET is not fully switched on. So that's a linear region. And when it does turn on, that's the active region. Right, so to test this unmarked FET, that PV have kindly engraved. In fact, while that 40 milliamps is flowing through this, it's getting yeah, mildly warm. So yeah, PV engraved the name off. So I'm trying to establish uh, what sort of characteristics it's got. The drain is on the back. This is the source and this is the gate. So hopefully you'll be able to see this current rise. As I rise the gate voltage, you'll see it will suddenly switch on and these FETs have an internal resistance of something like 0.2 of an ohm when they're fully switched on. 
So if I raise this voltage gently, Five, 5.2, 5.6, you can see the current's increasing, 70 milliamps, so this will be getting warm because it's not fully switched on, which means this is dissipating that power. We're up to 100 milliamps now. So unless you've got adequate heat sinks, you wouldn't want to run FETs in the linear region or ohmic region because yeah, they dissipate the power. Seven point three volts. There we go. So at seven point five, seven point six, roughly, it's suddenly turned hard on. So now this won't be dissipating. The FET won't be dissipating much power at all. We've just got sort of 1.7 amps at 12.8 volts and that internal resistance will be something like 0.2 of an ohm. So it will actually be cooling down from what it was earlier. So hopefully you saw that. So roughly 7.5, 7.6 volts, that gate voltage was high enough to turn the source and drain fully on. So 7.6 volts, 12.8 volts, 1.76 amps. And no, it's nice and cool. So if I turn that voltage down, we'll see where it turns off. You can see it's turned off, so we've got no current, at least on this two digit, uh, after the decimal place, no current at 3.7 volts. So this won't be dissipating any power. Now the trouble I had was this other FET, it was getting hot. So I thought, why is it getting hot? So I rigged it up on this assembly. Capable of doing the job current wise and voltage wise. So I thought, why is this getting red hot in seconds? And I'll wire it up and I'll show you what the trouble is. Right, so I've just swapped these FETs over. That's the engraved one, don't know what it is. And that's one I bought from Farnell or Mouser Electronics. So as I say, I put this one on the PV and the fan was racing within seconds. Had to keep on turning it off so as not to blow this up and then blow up the chip that drives it. And I've still got the drain voltage set at 12.8 volts. You watch when I turn this gate voltage up. Hopefully you can see it on the camera there. So we've got no current anywhere at the moment. Right, it's starting to get current. So this is starting to turn on. And you can see, hopefully you can see, that bulb is glowing, which means this FET is dissipating 12 volts at 40, no, 400 milliamps. So that's getting hot quickly. So I'll turn this up quickly. Five. Six, what, six point six volts. So this turns on sooner than the original PV, which isn't a bad thing. You don't want it sitting there, not switching on, because it's going to be dissipating power. So six point six volts. We've got thirteen going in, roughly one point seven seven amps going through the bulb, through the FET, and it's got a super low on resistance. Great. Why did I have to pop them on the PV? Now let me turn this gate voltage down. In fact, I'll turn it, yeah, I'll turn it down slowly. There we are, nothing. And that's the problem. I've turned it down to nothing, so we've got nothing on the gate. And we've still got 240 milliamps passing through this. 240 milliamps at 12.8 volts. So that's three watts of heat. And that's roasting just with that small bit of current, 240 milliamps, 13 volts, so just over three watts. But look, it's not turning off. So if I short out this supply, get another earth. I'll just short out this supply to the drain, and now it drops to nothing. Turn it back on. Uh, 
and then turn it off. Still the same, 240 milliamps. So if I disconnect this, and then reconnect it, that's it, it's stopped. So this FET doesn't turn fully off until you either disconnect the drain voltage or short it out. Having zero gate voltage isn't turning this FET off. So when that's on the PV amp with a plus or minus 75 volt rail, uh, I mean this is dissipating three watts at 13 volts, put 75 volts on it, that voltage is gonna soar and that's gonna get red hot in you know a fraction of a second, which is what it was doing. Right, so I've swapped that over again. So that's the original engraved PV transistor. This is, I think it's a 107 something from Infineon. And that's another one I've got from Farnell just today. I'll put up the part numbers in a minute. Let's see how this one performs. Right, so turn my supply on. So we've got 12.8 volts, turn this gate up. You can see there 4.4 volts starting to conduct. So that's in the linear ohmic region. You can see there's 1.5 amps, so it's not fully turned on yet at 5.2 volts gate. And there we are, sort of distinct brightener. So 5.8 volts, 1.77 amps. Now turn that down to nothing. Turn this gate down to nothing and we've got no current, which is grand. Try again. So six volts on, three volts is nothing. Five point six, five point seven on. And four gives us nothing. So between four and call it six volts, that's turning fully on and then fully off. It's not sitting on, so it shouldn't dissipate any power and that will hopefully do the job on the PV amp. So that transistor, that's behaving like a trihack. You know, it doesn't fully turn off until the sort of drain voltage disappears. It was actually an end channel, but that three power transistor, N channel, normal level. I'm sure I read MOSFET somewhere, so I thought, look at the case, it said voltage drain to source, 200 volts, RDS on max, 10.7 milliohms, and current, drain, drain current, 88 amps. I thought, fantastic, try one of those, couple of pound, but no, it's a three power transistor, N channel. So you can see it acts like a FET, but it doesn't turn off until you get rid of the drain voltage. And that's how a triac would work. You turn a triac on and that will not turn off until you get rid of the supply. And finally, this is that last transistor, field effect transistor. So we'll do it 200 volts. Um, 130 amps max at 100 degrees C. So this is a transistor, that's the part number there. That's the one I'm gonna try and use on the PV 1600 amps. Looks like it would do the job. So hopefully this has given you some insight into, you know, sort of brief working of a FET and the active linear region of a FET. Thank you for watching.